Hello Year 9, today we are looking at arrays for two-step experiments. So when you look at these questions here, you can see that they look like tables, like what we were doing last lesson. There is a very small difference between the types of tables and the reason we give them different name. Now the tables that we used last lesson we called two-way tables because we were comparing two different events. We were comparing the people who liked football to the people who liked cricket, those kinds of things. Whereas in an array, it is still a table that we're setting up, but what we're doing is we are repeating the same experiment and they are the two options in our table. So for example, in example number one here, two coins are tossed. On the top of this table is the results for the first time that I tossed the coin. So toss number one, I could get a head or a tail. The second time I toss the coin, so this is the same experiment, I'm doing it a second time, I could also get a head or a tail. Okay, so then in the white boxes here, I want to list off the possible outcomes that I get. So the first one's done for us, a head with a head, so I put that in brackets, H comma H for head, head, I could get two heads. Or I could get a head for the first toss, and a tail for the second one, so head and tail, that's what that looks like. Then the first toss could be a tail, then I could get a head second, or I could get a tail and a tail. Okay, so notice that I'm always putting whatever the first toss is, is the first thing in the bracket, because the order might be important depending on what the question is. Okay, so part B of this question wants me to list the sample space. Now the sample space is just listing off all the different possibilities of when I flick the coin twice. So we do a capital S for sample space equals, and we open those big funny curly brackets. Now we want to list off all the outcomes, which are all these things in the white boxes of my table. So the first one I had was head, head. Then I'm gonna put a comma. The next one I had was head, tail. The next one was tail, head. And the next one was tail, tail. It doesn't matter if you write those in a different order as long as you have the four different um, possibilities listed in that sample space there. Part C down here. Find the probability of getting or ob of obtaining a tail, then a head. Okay, so this is the order is important. It's not just a head and a tail or a tail and a head. It has to be the tail first, head second. Now, looking at my table, tail first, then a head is this option here that I'm highlighting in aqua. Okay, not this one over here. That is different order. So there is only one way, so one possibility out of the four of getting a tail then a head. However, that is different if I look at part D here. It says find the probability, the P stands for probability, find the probability of getting one tail. That then means it doesn't matter if I get the tail first or the tail second, I want either of these two options, so the two that are now highlighted in aqua, they both have one tail in them, exactly one tail. I don't want two tails, exactly one tail. So that now means that I have a probability of two out of the four outcomes, which we can simplify. Remember, you can use your calculators to simplify things. So two over, oops, not, I don't want another extra fraction in there. Let me start that again. Two over four, which simplifies to a half. Okay, so that's the end of our first question. We have another one here. Question two. Two letters are chosen from the word happy without replacement. Now, that without replacement means if I choose a H in my first selection, that H has been removed and I can't choose it for my second letter. Okay, so remember using this um, array, we have first letter here across the top and I have the letters H, A, P, P, Y. But if I have chosen a H out, 
I'm not going to be able to choose a H for the second letter. So you'll see that we've got these crosses in here. I can't choose H and H. The H has already been selected the first time. I can't get it the second time. I also can't choose A and A because once it has been chosen, it does not get replaced. So you have all these ones crossed out across this diagonal and that will always happen if you have a question like this where you're selecting something without replacing it. Okay, but we do want to fill in the rest of the outcomes around that. So let's fill them in. So we can have a head and an, sorry, not a head, it's a H. H and an A, using the first letter first. The next one would be H and a P. Let's go down this column. We get H and another P, because there's two P's in the word happy. H and a Y. Okay, then in the second column, we've already got the first one filled in, A and H. We can't have A and A, but we can have A and P and A and P and A and Y. Then the third column, the P is first, so that would be P, H. Then it would be P, A. Skip that one because we can't have that, that same P chosen twice. But we can have the first P chosen with the second P. So it is still possible to get two P's. And P, Y. The fourth column, so this is for the second P. So P, H, P, A, P, P, and P, Y. And for the last column, the Y is the first letter. So it would be Y, H, Y, A, Y, P, Y, P. And you can't have Y, Y. All right, so that is the table completed. Part B says, find the probability that the two letters chosen are both P. So we look through our list, our outcomes in there, and we're looking for the ones that have PP in them, PP, PP. There's two of them. So that means that there is two, the probability is two out of, now how many different outcomes do we have? Don't count the crosses, okay? So you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 2 out of 20, that is going to simplify. So let's get our calculator out. So 2 over 20 equals 1 in 10 chance of getting two Ps. Part C says find the probability that at least one of the letters is a P. So it could have one P, but it could also have two Ps because it says at least one P. So I'm gonna keep the two Ps highlighted, the ones in orange here, plus I want to highlight anything else that has a P in it. So that, oh, let me get my highlighter back. That one, that one, all these ones with P's in them, lots of them. So all those ones highlighted in orange have at least one P and there's two of them that has two P's. So we need to count how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen out of, now you count them again, but there should still be twenty, there's still twenty outcomes in that table. So 14 out of 20, simplify it on the calculator, is 7 out of 10. Okay, so that's the kind of thing that you are going to need to do with your arrays. So your questions start here on the next page, exercise 10C.